So this one right there, thank you. Two questions. One is you're planning for growth, which SCAG was originally you're not what designed you're designed to do was when it was formed was to plan for regional growth. But you have actually planned for shrinkage because you want to pack us the only way that this kind of transit system would work is to pack us into the cities. Because all of what you're talking about is for uh, dense mixed use communities as opposed to the way that we like to live in our suburbs, in our homes, in our individual homes. So I'd like to find out what changed you from a planning for what people want to planning what government officials think we need. Okay. Um, I wouldn't agree with the basic premise of your question in the sense that Ventura County, this town we're in right now, is very different from, let's say, downtown LA. It's very different from the Inland Empire. We were in San Bernardino yesterday. Very different from Imperial County down there. And it is absolutely true that one size does not fit at all. So the video in the presentation is done for the entire region. So when we're in Los Angeles County. What's a region? All six, when I talk about the region, I mean all six, six counties, counties, the scattered region, that's what I mean. The counties are Ventura County, Imperial County, San Bernardino, Riverside, Orange, and LA. Right? Yeah. Those are the six counties. And so, for instance, Los Angeles County, as I'm sure you know, has a, a pretty robust light rail system right now. And Metrolink comes in there as well, and Amtrak comes in there right now. Support Far less so here in Ventura County, and absolutely zero down in Imperial County. So everybody's a little bit different, and our plan certainly recognizes that. That's why the specific uh, improvements and investments that are proposed out of your local officials, and I, I do want to get to that because that's critically important, VCTC, Ventura County Transportation Commission, is the entity that gave to SCAP the list of transportation improvements, roads, metro, whatever it might be, from, we're not dealing with local roads in this plan, the cities deal with that, from arterial on up to the highways and freeways and so on. That's where we got the list for Ventura County, from VCTC, which is totally made up of local elected officials. That's also true from LA County, Orange County, Imperial County, and so on and so forth. So we put those together into this single plan. And you're absolutely correct in the sense that in Ventura County, there's a lot more single family homes now and in the future than there would be, let's say, in the central part of Los Angeles yeah, County. Just, just, I'm just going to make one more comment yeah. because that's not going to be the truth because what's being imposed on us is sustainable com communities. One of them being proposed right here in Camarillo to take out part of our meal in the center of our city as they did in Thousand Oaks with the uh, Thousand Oaks Boulevard specific plan. It's going to be mixed use, pack and stack. And we are not LA County, you are absolutely right. And everything that I saw in that film was geared which towards LA County, and a lot of it was done to emotionalize us into accepting this, and that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. In the last 30 months, um, VCTC has received about, I added it up, I think it's $180 million from the federal government in the last 30 months, $180 million. And I think their staff there is about 15 people. And of that $180 million, 27% was spent on planning. And I'm just wondering, where, where's all that money going? And why are you planning our future? Why, is, why, why isn't it just being dictated by the free market and what our needs are? And why are they bringing why are they regulating and taxing the land here and, and ruining the ranchers and farmers so that the, they have to sell their land or it's taken back by the city? On, on Thousand Oaks Boulevard, in a three mile long path on Thousand Oaks Boulevard, where they're putting in the specific plan, 62 businesses have gone bankrupt and the city has taken back the land. So now, the, and, and the city owns the lakes, and I, I, I don't know, the, this is not freedom, this is not what we want. This is, and where, where are you getting 
underneath all this land? Where are you getting all the land to do all these projects? I'd like to know that. That's my question. Okay, the actual projects, let's, let me take a um, freeway widening project just as one example. It could be freeway widening here in Ventura County or Orange County or San Bernardino County. The actual project is done by entities such as DCTC. Every single county has their own what's called Transportation Commission, CTC for short. Orange County's got one, LA's County's got one, we've got one here in Ventura County, DCTC. Those are the entities that do the detailed project design, acquisition of land. If they how, need, how do they acquire the land? If they, how do, how do, uh, there's two ways to acquire land. You can either go to the property owner. If you're building a public project like a freeway, there's two ways. It goes all the way back to 1776. You can go to the property owner and say, can I buy your land? And they work out some deal. And that is done a lot of times, call it a kind of a private real estate transaction. And if that doesn't be successful, then VCTC has the authority of eminent domain. Right. Yeah. But they have the authority. After you've downzoned it to worthlessness. Well, I'm just, I'm answering your question. That's, that's true, been true for there. And yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. So is there a vote? Do people vote on this? Is there a vote of the people? Do, is this put on the ballot and we vote for it? Are we, are you an elected official to be able to do this to our lives? No, I am staff who works for elected officials, the 84 that I mentioned to you earlier. The 84 of our county supervisors and city council people. That's correct. So these are the people who are, are authorizing you to do this. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Like, like Linda Parks here, we have Linda Parks. Linda, yes, I know Linda. Yeah, she's, 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 she's our board. So she's, author, she's one of the people authorizing. Well, to get to the very end, as I mentioned, as far as the process, we have a slide here that was going to be at the end. As you heard me say at the beginning, we're in the, this draft plan in April of this, of this year, April 4th to be specific. The regional council is expected to get together and vote one way or another on the RTP and SES. And Linda's on that board, she'll be on Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. What you're proposing to do is to try and get people on trains. The trains are empty, okay? I've lived here since 1960, and since 1960, I have never seen even a quarter-filled train car, ever. And I watch, because I go up and down, drive the road next to the railroad tracks. That's the first thing. The second thing is you're trying to get people on bikes. Most people cannot ride bikes or choose not to, but most have health reasons. Most of the people in this community, or a great deal of them, have doctor's appointments. There's a lot of elderly people. How do you propose to get those people to their doctor's appointments regularly? Because it's just not a reality. This is not LA. You want to do it to LA and most people are willing to accept it. You go to LA and do it, but you don't take our freedoms away and you don't cram people into an area and take our rights of driving or anything else. Away. A couple questions. One. You said the regional council will vote April 4th. So is that the six counties, the, when you said regional, or will it be Ventura County that votes independently? No, uh, the, the Skaggs Regional Council is made up of 84 um, officials. And those 84 officials are from the city councils and board of supervisors of the 197 jurisdictions that are within the six county SCAD region. So when I said vote, it's those 84 people that will be doing the vote. And so um, Ventura County could get squashed by the bigger entities, is that correct? Will our elected officials from our county really make a difference in their vote? Oh, absolutely they make a difference. I mean, uh, for, for just, just so you know, Glenn Becerra, who's a council member from the city of Simi Valley, right now is SCAG's first vice president and is fully expected in April to be elected president of SCAG for one year. Okay. Linda Parks is on there, Mr. Milhouse, Mr. Morehouse, other people, uh, elected officials who I know very well from Ventura County. And, you know, there's, 
I guess it's true everywhere, any individual city council, there's some city council members. Um, and by the way, just so you know, I worked for individual cities for 30 years before I came to work for SCAG. So I'm very familiar with uh, city council members, and some city council members are more involved than other city council members. That's just human nature, and it's true. But as I've looked at the elected officials who are on the SCAG Regional Council, what I've seen is a pretty good representation from the six counties, less in Imperial County, to be honest with you, because there's so few population there, of people who are really, really involved. And Ventura County has a number of elected officials that I would call really, really involved and knowledgeable in the bigger issues. Names, please. Mr. Morehouse, Mr. Millhouse, Mr. Becerra, Ms. Parks are probably the four that come to my mind immediately. Okay, and last question. Um, at the end of this session today, yeah. how are you going to determine what the outcome is? Is there some kind of vote? And if somebody has to leave a little early, can we put a, I mean, how are you going to report the conclusion of this meeting? That's a good question. Uh, this is one of um, 18 meetings we're holding throughout the entire region. We had a uh, first one here in Ventura County last Friday. And it was actually part of the agenda of a joint meeting with VCOG and BC, uh, BCTC. And, uh, officials were, so there were 35 elected officials at that meeting, and probably about that many of the public also at that meeting. And uh, we are taking public comments, and what we, this meeting is being taped, so everybody's on, on, uh, on tape, obviously. But the best way, which we're encouraging people, is written comments. And there's a variety of ways to make written comments. We've got cards here, they're not too big, and I understand that it may not be convenient for you to write a comment today and give it to us, but if you want to, we will take it. You can give it to me at the end of the meeting. The other way is you can write a good old-fashioned letter to us. Uh, the main way that I think is most convenient for people nowadays is to get on our website. You can see our web address right there. As you can imagine, most of our website right now is devoted to the RTP and SCS and you can see the entire plan, technical appendices, the video somebody asked earlier, it's on there. Uh, the PowerPoint presentation is on there. And most importantly, there's a real convenient place to comment on there. And we will get all of those comments. So that's kind of how we report out. We take the bundle of comments. And once the formal public review period is over on February 14th, we take what I expect will be hundreds and hundreds of comments and uh, you know, see where the commonalities are and see what response, if any, we need to make in the final plan to change the draft plan. And we will be reporting out to our elected officials in SCAG of what the themes of those comments were. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have, uh, I guess, a couple of questions. One of them, when I voted for my elected officials, I did not know I was giving them um, domain to make decisions over my future, the future of my children, and my grandchildren without me having a vote. And I want to know why none of this organizational planning has come up for a vote of any of the constituents. It seems to me like it's already drawn up. People have already made up their mind, and the 84 blessed ones are going to decide how the rest of us are going to live. And I don't approve of that. And I. Does anybody else agree with me in here? We're <laughs> so, the consensus. I think that that ought to be part of it, that um, this group doesn't have, isn't giving you guys consensus mm -hmm. to do that. Thank you. Yeah, I just have a couple of quick questions. Uh, do you know of any any situation in the entire United States where rail passenger traffic has broken even and not had to been supported by the government, which is taxation. Do you know of any situation in the United States? No, and I, I could add to that, that's also true about automobiles. Oh, um, I don't think so. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to... You're not buying a train. Uh, I'm not trying to cause a conflict, so I'm saying that there's an enormous amount of tax dollars every year that go into both constructing and maintaining every single road you drive. And that money there comes from fuel taxes, taxes, right? It, it comes, comes from, from federal fuel taxes. taxes. All of it comes from taxpayers. 
Yeah. So, uh, if if the rails aren't breaking even, the buses aren't breaking even, and what's the model for all this stuff you have? Is it Europe? Europe's not breaking even. So, uh, you know, this is sad because it's going to drive us all toward a European model, which, well, you can see how that's working out. You know, that's that's just uh, it's it's obvious to us what's going on here. And we've got our eyes on you. I want to pass over these pictures that I took last summer in Seoul, Korea. This is the way you are wanting us to live. I want everybody to take a look how close this housing is. There were 600 to 800 square feet for each apartment that is surrounded by so-called green space that was covered with a quick train that went from the airport to downtown Seoul. All of those people that got crammed into those houses didn't have a say either or they would not be there. You know, I, I appreciate that comment. I should say something or clarify something because it's kind of come up with various questions. The sole authority of land use decisions, the sole authority of land use decisions, zoning, what projects, you know, what development projects get built, how they get built, what they look like, what their density is, is and remains with the elected city councils, not with SCAP. That has not changed. It, is, it was true 100 years ago. It was true 50 years ago. It was true yesterday. It's true that's tomorrow. Not true. That's not true. That's not true. They're, they're talking about, they're talking about, about regionalizing it. cities that their transportation... Ma'am, I'm just telling you, the local city councils are the only ones empowered. You were describing the project in Thousand Oaks. It's the only one empowered to make a decision on that kind of project, regardless of what they do with it, not SCAG in any way, shape, or form. But SCAG is a read. You're, you've got work. Okay. May, may we talk, talk to? Yes. And and just so you know where we got, you'd asked a question that I don't think maybe we gave a good, or somebody did during the beginning of the presentation, where we got the uh, projections of population. We got them from the cities. Every single city and county, all 197 of them, we asked them for their 2020 population projection and their 2035 population projection, and they have their own ways of, you know, how much open space they have, what their zoning is, all the normal ways. They gave us all, no 197 jurisdictions, gave us their projections, and their projections is what's in our plan. We did not make up something new. We took in the data from the individual cities and put it into the plan. So that's, I think that's important for you to know. Yes, ma'am. Um, your interpretation of the construction of all of this is it all limited to union construction or are construction people like my son who is non-union are those jobs going to be open for them yeah. Yeah. Uh, our plan does not speak to the issue of union or non-union at all but all of everything that is government is always union and the non-union this will be to California. I know that the state of California does have laws like that, but I'm just saying that's not that's not a part of our plan. That's something that's done. We have a microphone. I'll start at the first table, and I'll go to the second table, and I'll go three, four, five, and then the final row. So. Hi. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, I'm not very good at math, but um, 84 officials from 197 jurisdictions represents less than 50% representation among those jurisdictions, and that doesn't seem sufficient to me. Um, secondly, you just mentioned where the derivation of the statistics came from on those population increases, which is all well and good, except the crucial part is missing is the demographic changes over time, which are going to involve aging populations. More than half the, half the people will be over 50 by 2035. Mm -hmm in the population. And that really should factor into the idea of bicycling and et cetera. Uh, arguably, uh, the most important aspect. More than one of them, so I... Yeah, 
we know this is the decline of the brain of America, and this doesn't seem to be, uh, I never hear it mentioned in this. I see little children trying to make me feel guilty. We do. No, that's a very good point. We right. are a demographic right. organization. We do track yeah. all of that. You're absolutely correct. Right. Okay. And, yeah. Yep. So these statistics that we're hearing, aside from the population, I've attended a couple of other meetings that were like this uh, through my educational um, entity that I'm affiliated with. And I can say that they cite these statistics and often don't tell you where they came from. And um, that's why my first question today was about where the statistics were coming from pertaining to the, G the uh, carbon, not, uh, carbon dioxide emissions. Um, one of the things that we keep being told is that people have changed what they want in their lifestyles, that young people are getting married, having children, no longer want to live in the suburbs, no longer want to have their own single family homes. They actually prefer to live in these denser transportation hubs. And the only, stati the only um, study I've ever been able to get anybody to admit to that they derived this, this information from was a Cal Berkeley study. And so I think it's very important if you, if you want to project your plans with citizen involvement and be open and fully transparent that these kinds of presentations should have your derivation of your statistics. We need to know the studies that you're looking at that are much much more detailed than simple population increases in the different counties. That's all, all right. I'd like to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number one, I'm really concerned by the statement you have across the top of the screen right now. We want to hear from you. However, I notice that this meeting today is in the afternoon on a work day. It's the only one for this county, then you move on to the next county. That's really not enough time to hear from the population that you're serving. I think it's very unfair and just wrong. I also think... I said we did have another one last Friday and about 70 people were there as well. So. Well, earlier you said 35. 35 so, elected officials, 35 public. Elected officials who already know what you're doing hardly count. Okay, that's public, okay? No, and please, yeah, let's, you want to hear from the public, I'm sure, as well as elected officials. And it just strikes me as very wrong that your 84 represented representatives of the population represent 18 million, you said that. And if that's the way it goes, then that also should have been transparent. It should have been gone out to the public so that we know where these people stand, what they're planning, and that they're speaking for us. So you may have all the best intentions in the world, but we still live in a free country, and we're supposed to have a say. My name is Alex. Oh, we don't need this. I just wondered if you could provide a. Yes, we do. Okay, I just wondered if you could provide a list of the 84 people on the regional uh, council of membership list and their their positions and maybe contact information. Absolutely, all of their names are on our website. That's okay, probably the fastest way to see their names. Thank you. Yep. Yes, uh, I just wanted to add the comment that uh, we keep hearing about uh, the problem with all the cars on the road and the air quality, and uh, the truth is the air quality is getting better and we have more cars on the road. So I don't know what that is talking about. The second thing I want to point out, I want to reiterate, is about the handicapped people and elderly people, and this uh, wonderful uh, congestion that you have is going to involve great difficulties for the freedom of our elderly people and their inability to get into cars, which equates to freedom. Yes. Yeah. Hello, my name is Mark. Um, there, this, this sentence, and I'm missing a lot of the why from this, because Never before have the crucial linkages and interrelationships between the economy, the regional transportation system, and land use been as, in, as important as now. Um, that is an assertion. It's not a founded on, on any type of fact, objective study, and it's telling me that a group of people got together and told me what would be good for this area of California and decided that they would implement it without any risk to themselves 
because they have full taxpayer backing and are able to, through eminent domain, confiscate property if the people don't agree to their plans. Um, and, and through these financial statements, and people were asking how to fund this, there's a, a flyer here, that have additional per gallon adjustment to taxes and a lovely thing called mileage-based user fees, yeah. which I, my question is, how are those calculated? And how will they be? Because on your website, uh, there's a significant source for those of funding. It ends up being something along the lines of $110 billion from innovative financing and new revenue sources, but for the first two time periods, they're, they're zero. So out of three, three time periods you have on here up till 2035, gets up to $110 billion. Out of all of these categories, the only one bigger is the sales tax. Um, and so could you explain to me how those mileage-based user fees are calculated, please? <laughs> yes, they're based on uh, the idea that uh, the user may, uh, fee or something similar to it will need to, at some point, and we're projecting beginning in 2025, which is why you don't see it sooner than that, and slowly going up to 2035, replacing gas tax, because gas tax is essentially going to disappear in this country. And the reason it's going to disappear is for two reasons. It's buying power. It isn't, you heard something on the video, that word, it's not indexed. It's not tied to inflation. So the gas tax we pay right now, and all of us pay every time we buy a gallon of gas, is the same exact as far as cents today as it was 20 years ago, even though we're paying about four bucks a gallon as opposed to two bucks a gallon. Still gas tax is exactly the same. It just hasn't been, and it hasn't been changed since 1993. That's just a statement of fact. So it's about 60, it's lost 60%, I mean, we've had about 60% inflation since 1993. So it's buying power, and what gas tax is mostly used for is maintenance and operation of roads and so on. Some capital, but mostly maintenance and operation. But the other thing that's going on is we're at the tip of the iceberg as far as new technologies and the one we hear about now, of course, is electric cars, but we're just at the very tip of the iceberg of that exploding into the marketplace. Says who? Who the hell says that electric is going to explode? It's other than to catch on fire. <laughs> it is, their sales are going up every Oh, that's time. nonsense. That's crap. That's absolute nonsense. The point, the point is, let me just make the point, by the time, by the time we were projecting out towards the end of this plan, by 2030, 80% of the buying power of gas tax would disappear. That is done, that money again is used for maintenance and operation. That's really, really important, maintaining the roads. So the user fee, because we know how many people are driving, how many gallons are going to be used, and the estimate of, based on, you know, federal air, air And you know that we're going to be driving around with electric trucks, is that right? You know That's they're, what they're you taking know? out with electric trucks. We're going to drive electric trains. They're not being used. The free market should be Electric cars don't even yeah, work. Every year, the assumption every, is ridiculous. Every year in Detroit and Tokyo, you're going to see more and more either hybrid or electric. No, you're not. No, no, because Obama is not going to be in office, but for one more year, it will change. I'm just saying, I'm trying to answer your question over here, Mark, sorry. Uh, that, that's where it came in. It's, excuse me. It's calculated based on the number of people in our population, what their expected amount of driving is going to be, and it's replacing it's replacing a five percent increase of gas tax that that hasn't occurred in 20 years. So that's where the calculations. Are. I also want to say something because this is kind of a global issue that I think is really important uh, because a lot of the questions are kind of for where the transportation projects come from and where's the basic payment for the capital of transportation projects are going to be as. As you know, because I think this has been a pretty hot issue in Ventura County since about 03, 04, there isn't any kind of a half cent sales tax or transportation here in Ventura County. But there are in the other five counties. So you heard me earlier say that their transportation commissions give SCAP the list of their transportation projects 
that they have prioritized to be built out to 2035. And some of them in the next four years, and some in the next 10 years, and some of them way out at the end. Their funding for most of those, not all of them, is from their voter approved, two thirds approved, half cent sales tax in those counties. So that's where that comes from. Then there's also federal dollars, transportation bills, state dollars a little bit, and gas tax does help with that as well. So I just, as an overall standpoint, I just wanted to clarify that because that had come up in a lot of questions. Yes, ma'am. What troubles me is that there are 84 um, people in this county who are deciding, or who are such dim bulbs that they don't understand or accept the fact that the green agenda is a complete fraud, that there is no global warming, that man isn't creating it, and if it was, it would be insignificant. Insignificant. And even Phil Jones, who was an IPC, in the IPCC, and it's his studies that we're all basing our futures on, he admits that over the last 10 years there has been insignificant increase in temperature, and yet you want to reduce CO2 emissions, which is what we breathe out. Here, you've got $25 worth of my CO2. In fact, why don't we all just, just agree, once a week we'll hold our breath for an, a minute, and that ought to solve the problem. I mean, I can't believe that these dim bulbs, that you actually aren't facing up to, to Governor Brown and the other people and saying, this is absurd. The only reason that you want to, uh, to control CO2 is to control our lives because it controls absolutely everything we do. And China is polluting. Yeah. Will you answer that? Can you answer that? Can you comment on that? Well, I think that was a common opinion. Well, I what is your question. opinion of that? Our opinion is our RTP plan responds to federal mandates and state mandates. These are laws. What is your personal opinion? It's not a law, though. It's not a law. No, it is a law. It is a law. What do we do? Is it a law how you're going to use our plan? No. But you're not at fault. You're just following SB 375. I heard it. No. So what do we do? I understand. Because I know you're a planner. You're doing what they told you to go do. I get it. But what do we do? Let me, if I may. Let's forget about air pollution for a moment. Let's say it doesn't exist. Let's say this plan does nothing for air pollution whatsoever. Let's just say. Let's Sounds just good. Remove it, <laughs> remove it off the table. Is there, is, is this kind of planning for improving the freeways, HOV lanes, expanding some of these freeways, improving or expanding light rail, improving and expanding various kinds of bus lines, including bus rapid transit, improving or expanding the heavier trains like Metrolink, and improving and expanding uh, bicycle routes. Is there, is there any worth to that in our society at all? My opinion, you, you asked my opinion, it's a fair question, sir. My opinion is forget air pollution totally. Creating more opportunities for all of us, not force, because nobody can force to ride a train or ride a bike or anything like that. Oh, yeah. Creating yeah. more opportunities for people who want to use them throughout Southern California in these six counties, my opinion, is a very worthwhile thing to do. That's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, if it does help other things, like air pollution or public health or something like that, fine. That's great. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I heard the president of uh, Mercedes-Benz speak about the future of the automobile. And he said that the automatic uh, self-controlled automobile are the thing in the future and that uh, you'll call up your car, it'll come to your home, it'll pick you up and drop you off to the dentist and it'll return you to your home. And this is not a fantasy. It's within 15 to 20 years from now. They're well on the way to it. Google has an automobile that has driven 144,000 miles without an accident. It's been tested and it's a perfectly practical system. And it's the future of automobiles. Why do you go back to trains, which is a 19th century invention, and try to force us into ancient technology? Why don't you be, have foresight and look into the future of the automobile and make our infrastructure that we have now twice as 
productive. We you absolutely are. The, the, we absolutely are. One of those, the first slide that went up there that had to do with breaking down money between arterials and freeways was $100 billion was for existing roads, improvement or expansion, as well as local arterials, which are basically your six lane roads. And this is not just all about trains, it's both. Is it, will it work without the train? Does what work without the train? Will this plan work without the train? It wouldn't have the same benefits, it wouldn't have the same results, so I guess the answer is How about for how many people would have the same, wouldn't have the same benefits? I mean, the train ridership is very small. Yeah. It is. Very small. Yeah. Why in the hell are we spending all that money for them? Well, again, if I, if I may say, the, the biggest investment in train, light rail, in the entire region, which doesn't affect Ventura County, but it's a part of the region, is Los Angeles County. The, the so-called metro system. The gold line, the green line, the red line, all that stuff. The voters of Los Angeles County just a couple of years ago voted by about 85% to tax themselves to double the system, that was the end of that. They're, the elected officials are going to do that because they have now, you know, got that they have to do it. That's the way and it should so be done. And so they gave us that plan. So I'm just using an example. That's the way it should be done. Yeah. Exactly. The people that want it voted in, yeah. they pay for it, and they use it. Yeah. The yeah, people that don't, don't. No, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to argue, but that's their sales tax in LA County. It's a half cent sales tax, Los Angeles County, right. to pay for the metro system being doubled. That's what it is. It's appropriate. No, not, not, ma'am, not, not that money. That half cent sales tax in those five counties is generated in those counties. It stays in those counties. That's why. Yeah, but there's the overall um, tax dollars you've already generated are being pulled into a regional fund. No, there's, that, yeah, there's no regional fund. Why are they being pulled out of the cities? The VCTC has their own funding. The other five have their own funding. SCAC has yeah, absolutely that's, no that's funding a whatsoever. Again, they have no funding whatsoever. City. But why do you want to put the trains in before the need is there? Why don't you? Why are you not letting the free market work? If if we need more trains, the, our trains that we have will be full. Right. If we need. You show pictures of a Ventura Highway from Ventura to Santa Barbara that's got to be from four years ago. Our highway doesn't look like that anymore. I, why don't you? Why are you deceiving us? Why are you saying these things? Why? Why are we? Why should we pay for these things before we? And, and we don't want them. Why well, isn't the market the, working? The marketplace is working in the places yeah. where most of the trains are. The ridership is, in fact, going up. And I will just tell you, not that this has anything to do with me, because it doesn't, but I live in L.A. County, San Gabriel Valley. I ride the Gold Line most days. It is wall-to-wall -wall people, standing room only. And so they're expanding the Gold Line to move it out another five miles. That's L.A. County's uh, Transportation Commission, which is reflected in this plan because more and more communities going out to Arcadia and Duarte and going out past Pasadena wanted it. The city councils really wanted it. The ridership is so high, the parking lots have actually gotten filled up. So I understand what you're saying. I can, I can look at a Metrolink that's coming here through Ventura County in the middle of the day. There's hardly anybody on it. I'm not doubting what you're saying there. I'm saying that overall ridership is up, and depending upon which rail you're talking about, which part of the county or which part of the region you're talking about, some of them are really, really heavier demand. And at the end of the day, I think, um, and I'll use a Metrolink example here in just a second, but it just occurred to me. Your, your advice that the marketplace, which is the people kind of showing the demand, is what has to drive the improvements that are made is absolutely correct. There's been Metrolink going out to the Inland Empire, coming into downtown LA for a long time, and it's pretty well used. It's pretty well used. I have a lot of friends that use it. But they thought there was a demand from the public of an express. Because right now it stops many times, and it takes like an hour, I think 45 minutes, to get from San Bernardino to Union Station. They decided to see if there would be a demand from the public of an express train that went straight from San Bernardino right into Union Station. Does it have any stops? In one? Is it the express? Well, I think it's got one stop in like Ontario. That has that started 
nine months ago, that thing has been a huge winner. Standing room only, now the public, the writers are saying, I want to use it, I can't get on it, it's so crowded, run two expresses. So long-term planning, when you're going out a quarter of a century, you can't be exact. But when you get to the individual specific decisions to add a train, to expand something, you can be more exact. Exactly. And I think they do use all these rail lines, MTA or whoever's doing it, Metrolink, they are using what the evidence they've got on the turnstiles of public demand to decide where they're going to go next. Because the truth is, there's never enough money to do everything everybody wants. That's true in life, I think, for everything. So they've got to decide, are they going to run another express between San Bernardino and Union Station? Are they going to try to create an entirely different line going down somewhere where it doesn't exist? And they're doing that based on what they can figure out with market demand. I really do think that's trying Would to Would the 84 people vote, the 84 czars vote, will, will they, what they vote for, is that good for the region, the all six counties? Because now we're, the, our, our, our towns, cities, counties are now going to become regions. So now are, we're going to be ruled by region. No, we, so, I mean, our, our, our Skag's authority hasn't changed in but, but what's going to happen when these 84 people vote? 84 people are going to Okay, vote. that's a good question. At, at the beginning of Naresh's, um, I'll get to you next, sir. Yes. At the beginning of Naresh's um, statement, he was saying, you know, why does an RTP even exist? It was the method, the document, the process that the federal government created to act as a conduit for Fed money coming down the local region, their part. And you heard me say a lot of that money is local, but their part. Um, when it comes to these six county transportation commissions, including VCTC, they want to do a specific project. Let's say they want to expand the 101 or put an HOV lane on the 101. That improvement needs to be in the RTP or else it can't happen. It doesn't force it to happen, it allows it to happen. And so we, do, we update these things every four years, and sometimes the situation changes. These RTPs can be amended in the intervening period of time. Every once in a while they are. So to answer your question, if a project goes into the RTP, it allows it to happen at the local level, although it does not require it to happen. So our money level. is, so all the money is there then? That, that, that gathering of our tax money is there? For the shorter term projects, and I'll define that as the ones in the next 10 years, uh -huh. yeah, I'd say that's virtually guaranteed lockdown funding. It's either the half cent sales tax or the gas tax that we know is coming in, or the Fed a transportation bill from the federal government that you just know is going to happen. As you go further out in this plan and get to the second half of it, which is, uh, let's say, post 2020, 2020, 2035, then you're getting more into the longer range plan. So that money, well, we've got projections. It's not in the bank. And that's the reason we have to update this thing every four years. So by the time you get to 2035, it's locked in with more short-term certainty. Because I'll be the first to admit, while we are doing projections of various things out uh, 23 years, there's no way you can be as correct 23 years as you are and something's going to happen four years from now. We, we know. Now questions, yes, uh, please. Sir. Um, first of all, a comment on the, the train transportation. Now, with these trains that you were talking about, they're coming in full, people standing. When they get to the station in, in Los Angeles, I, I'm assuming then that everybody works within a block away from yeah. where the station is. Or do they? And do they not have to really take some other form of bus or car or rental car or taxi or something to get to the place of work? Or bicycle? That's a great question. I think see, that, that's why it doesn't work. Electric bike. Because you're using other. If I took a train from Camarillo to Los Angeles and I wanted to go to a, a you know, a some other, uh, the Veterans Hospital or someplace like that, I'd have to still get transportation from there to there. What if I drove down in my car, I'd be there in an hour. Listen, this plan acknowledges that the vast majority of people 
even out in 2035, we're still using cars. It is not suggesting, proposing, projecting that people are not going to be using cars. Well, I'll tell you something. It, it's just not. And so the example you gave is right. If you're in a more intense area, downtown LA probably being the best example, but there's tons of examples in the region. I'll tell you people do get on the train and they walk five, six blocks, including yeah. yours truly, and that's how they get to work. When you get out more into the suburban areas, there is a, a, a phrase or a, a strategy that is beginning in this plan called first mile, last mile. And all that means is kind of getting at what the issue and the problem you just raised. Um, the light rail system in a lot of places and even some of the metro system systems is getting so popular the parking lots that were built are completely sold out. Yeah, but then when they get there, again, you yeah, haven't solved that problem. Now, so the, the, here's my solution. I'll tell you how to save a lot of money. Okay. I'll tell you how to save a lot of money. You say the, the uh, extension or the expansion of the, uh, the train system will cost so many billions of dollars, right? Yeah. Instead of spending that money on the trains, we'll buy these people cars. <laughs> we don't have drive they can drive in. Or, or give them a taxi fare or something. And you'll save, you really would save a lot of money. It's just yes. mind-boggling. Right, here's a comment on uh, uh, biking, uh, bicycle lanes. Um, in Ventura County, too many county I really know about, very, very few people use bikes for serious transportation. You can't go to the market, <laughs> where are you going to put your stuff? Unless you have a big basket in the front or back. So it, it's people who are go out mostly for exercise, mm -hmm. pleasure. And kids uh, today, huh? kids too. Yeah. Yeah, kids. Right. I'll get to that. The today I drove from uh, Carmen Drive down to the library here, and there was one biker on on a biking lane on on Las Posas, on Las Posas. and um, I didn't think he was riding that steadily, you know. So I, and here I am in the, in the right lane, and I'm going, mm hmm, So I slipped over to the left lane and went by him that way, and then I went back to the other way. But, uh, and, 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 you know, how often do we read in the newspaper about somebody being killed by some driver who wasn't paying attention, maybe he's texting or something, I don't know what he's doing. But he's, he kills somebody, and, and I don't think the paper reports all of the injuries other than the deaths. So bike riding is dangerous. We we have four, um, we have seven grandchildren in Ventura County, and they're not allowed to ride in those bike lanes. They ride on the sidewalks, and um, I, I just I just don't see spending money on more bike lanes. Oh, by the way, another thing about the bike lane on Ventura uh, uh, on uh, Las Posas here. I was looking at it. I don't think it's more than two feet wide. Here, about like that, and, and a bike to be on that, you know. Yeah, it's not enough. You're right. No, it's it's ridiculous. And the play, you know, one of the things um, that we're trying to do to help cities is that most cities we found out just in the past year, it's actually kind of surprised me, uh, don't have any kind of citywide master plan of their own for bicycle lanes, including to get to your point off-street bicycle lanes where it is safer for kids and anybody else for that matter uh, to ride a bike and we're going to try to help either with small funds we have or funds from the state of California to help the 197 jurisdictions of those cities who want some assistance to create their own bike master plan we're going to try to help them do that. Why can't you put bike lanes on the sidewalks? Why can't sidewalks just be that? You can't. You can't. Well, I mean, because sidewalks Normally when you have, uh, nor I've, I've actually built a lot of joint, normally you'll have your typical four to four and a half foot um, sidewalk, and if there is a bike lane combined, you'll add another three to four feet to it, and maybe with a little bit different surface, surface uh, so that it's designated ones for... So the bikes are with the traffic, that's very, I used to bike all the time when I was a kid, I wouldn't yeah. now. 
Off yeah, it's mainly the commuter people who are, I guess you call more serious bicyclists that are using bikes for commuting that seem to really want to be in the streets. They don't want to be off street because they think it slows them down. They're both. I mean, the <coughs> recreational, which is what I would be, is wants to be off street, and the commuter bicyclists, they want to be on street and they deal with the. Yeah. Is that being on the freeway? It, may I make a comment just, here? Just a few. Just for, um, for a moment, please. I, you guys have had a moment. I want one moment to. Anyway, there's a there's a, something that has already been tied and trusted in England, and it's a solar car. And the gas companies <laughs> bought it up because it was very successful, and it ran on sunshine, not coal, and not electricity. And it was big enough for two people and groceries. And this happened back in uh, the late 70s, early 80s. Pathetic. And um, it was it was a wonderful machine. And although uh, the patents and things have been bought up, like many other things. It is possible in the future that this could be produced and it would be available for us here. And so then a gasoline tax would no longer be available to the government. And that might really put a kink in your plans. What are they doing now? Can I have some of what you're drinking? <laughs> Without needing recharging, and uh, you know, a lot of it is being uh, held by uh, vested interests, you know, car manufacturers and various people. But um, I feel we're being nailed to the wall um, by a government agenda that's going to tax us and use a trumped-up, uh, fictitious pie in the sky in the future to grab our money today and push us into a place that none of us want to live. Exactly. Okay, we've gone around the room one, one time, so we'll start and see if there's any further comments at this, uh, on the on site. That Anybody table here? hasn't had any comments. Oh, yeah. Show. When, when Narish was uh, starting off with his presentation, he was talking about uh, bond funding for some of this project. Yeah. What portion of the uh, of the overall uh, cost of the, the total cost for all this involves bond funding? I don't know because that's up to the individual CTCs. What they do is they take this, they bond against the half the five counties they have the half cent sales tax. They bond against that half cent sales tax so they can get the money sooner. And whatever level they feel safe bonding at, they do. And I don't think we have any. I don't think I know what each CTC does. It's completely up to them. County Transportation Commission. Okay. Um, I have, that, I have they're, one bonding, they're bonding against that sales tax revenue projections in the future. I have one other comment to make, and that is I, I think overall planning is very important. I think this is a, a great function that every you know any, anybody in life needs to do this. Business has to do it. Government has to do it. People have to do it for their own lives. The problem that I that I see with this whole thing is that you're embarking on a very expensive proposition here. You have a shrinking tax base. On a federal basis, half the people in the country don't even pay taxes, which leaves the rest for you know, for the middle class that are paying most the lion's share of it. Here in California, I read last week that in 2000, uh, in 2008, 2009, um, roughly a third of the top 2% of taxpayers have left the state. I think that's gonna continue based on what's going on with the economy. I see our tax base shrinking. The lady across the room here was commenting on we have an aging population. I think the tax base is shrinking. I think what we're gonna end up with here for your primary tax base, you're gonna start finding middle class taxpayers can't afford to live in the state. They're gonna leave the state and the four million people that you're talking about growing in this, in this, uh, 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 what do we call this thing? Re uh, the RTD. region, in this region, the four million people you're gonna see, I think it's gonna be illegals. 
because I think you're gonna, I think the rest of them are going to be gone. You'll have 10 million people who come in as illegals. Six million are going to leave. Now, where is your tax base at that point? When, when you when you run a business, you don't go into a major expansion program when you're on your knees, when you're about ready to roll over and croak. You can't go to the bank and get a loan. You don't. That's not the time when you go out and decide to, to hire, you know, five million people or whatever it is. That's the time that you pull back and you, you, you get yourself healthy again. It's just like if you had heart surgery, you don't go out next week and start trying to run a marathon. It doesn't work. You've got to heal your body first. This economy is on its knees in California. The economy nationally is on its knees. Yeah. I think this whole, I, I love the idea of the plan. I, I'm all for planning. But I don't think the time you start this is now. I think you let us get healthy. Then we're all for it. Well, Maybe not no, this. No, no, no. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not for this greenhouse nonsense. This is all crap. <laughs> well, I just want to make a couple of comments before I ask my specific question, and I do um, want to let you know that. I have driven, uh, ridden on the red line. It is very, very busy. The orange line is very, very busy. I had to stand on it, which I didn't mind at the time. I was going to downtown LA, and uh, I, on a separate occasion, had to go to downtown LA in my car, and I ended up having to park in a parking structure near my building that cost me about $20 a day to park in. So the gentleman who suggests that people should abandon the rail and alternative modes of transportation and just uh, everybody should have a car. Well, when your population um, is swelling and your land is not increasing with the population, you have to come up with some creative solutions and everybody can't be driving around a car because there's just no room. If you've ever been at the 101 and the 405 um, exchange, you know that that's the second most congested freeway um, interchange in the, in the country. But possibly would rank high in the world. Um, my question to you is that the Sustainable Communities Initiative that started under the Obama administration that um, partnered the Department of Transportation, the EPA, and the D Department of uh, uh, HUD, excuse me. Um, I read recently that because of the lack of funding that um, uh, communities that were getting funding to uh, improve their sustainable aspects, such as mobility. Um, they're not going to be doing that anymore, or at least, you know, until uh, the economy can improve. So how do you think that will affect the, the long-term plan? Well, uh, not, not well. I, mean, I don't disagree with anything this gentleman just said about the state of the economy right now. I think we all know that, and we're looking at the long term. The uh, program SCAG has, and it's continuing even despite the economic problems this year, and we're going to keep it going as best we can. It's called a Compass Blueprint Program. What it is, it's a grant program to local cities, and they average between 125000 and 150000 So that's not a huge amount of money, but it's something, and nobody's giving our cities money right now, believe me. And particularly with you know what you've heard in the news in the past few months about redevelopment areas kind of coming to an end, Redevelopment funding was probably uh, the most important funding our cities had in the last 20 or 30 years to do replanning, master planning, improve deteriorated downtowns or whatever it was they were doing. And that looks like that's going away now. So that's not good news either. Um, we, we have provided in the past five years 138 projects in about 97, 98 separate of our cities. $13.5 million of grants. They've had very few strings tied to them. Uh, we've simply asked that it's for good planning and something that's helping their communities, and that's what they've done. And they usually use that money in concert with other funds that they have from somewhere else because $150,000 just doesn't go that far. So to answer your question, uh, any lack of funding from the feds and state or the deterioration or elimination of redevelopment areas is not going to help anything. I mean, that's, that's obvious. It's just not going to help. So we're trying to do what little we can. 
to help cities who voluntarily want to update their master plans or update their downtown plans or whatever it is they're important in their particular town. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, just to address the, the lady in the back there uh, and add to it. Uh, she mentioned having difficulty getting to a location. I guess it was downtown. Okay. Uh, back in the 70s, there was something called carpooling. It can still be done today. When you go on the freeway today, you see 70 to 80 percent of the vehicles have one person. I think it's 90, actually. Okay, 90 percent. Now, I realize if you're in business for yourself or a private contractor, you're going from one site to another, you're going to be able to carpool with someone else on the freeway. Yeah. But many people that are going to the same location, if they choose, it's still a way to... We still have some freedoms here, and that's one of them. We want to drive by ourselves to where we want to go. We still have that right. But for those that are challenged with that, either financially or otherwise with a car, uh, you can carpool. Yeah. Maybe, the, maybe the state or the county or whatever should develop a sophisticated carpool program for its constituents that maybe would assist the, the freeway congestion problem that you're concerned about. Yeah, you know, that's obviously what the okay. point of yeah. the now, to take that one step. There's an app for that. But there you go. There's okay. an app. Yeah. Now to get back to the to the whole plan here, uh, do you have a cost benefit analysis? Was that done with this plan? And if so, how detailed is it? How specific is it? Where is the money coming from? Where is the money going? Is that very specific in this plan? The cost benefit. There is a cost benefit analysis that's being done. It's going to be completed within the next month, and so the most convenient way to get it probably would be off our website when it's done. Um, and I'm sorry, the second half of your question was, how specific is it? How specific is it? How realistic is it? Well, I think it's very realistic. It's not done on per project because there's like hundreds of projects. It's not project by project, but it is done of the RTP plan in general. And that will be available for review and comment? Absolutely. Will you come back on that? Oh, I don't know if I'm going to come back on it or not. I know it's going to be. Well, if we don't have a cost benefit analysis, how do we know it's even uh, I know legitimate? It's, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I know it's going to be done in about a month. There's a different group that's doing it. And we have, these are all private sector people that we hired into an economic team to do a cost benefit analysis of the plan so that the regional council would have it when they kind of got to their final decision. That's pretty critical. It is critical, particularly in this economy. Yes, sir. Well, was there an, an inflation rate that was built into the projections that you're making going all the way out to 2035? We, we do both in what's called, if you're familiar with this term, nominal dollars, which means today's dollars. So the numbers you saw up here at the beginning of the slideshow, 525 billion, that's today's dollars. But we also sidebar do an inflation factor, assuming historical inflation rates going all the way up to 2035. So that 525 ends up with a much bigger number by the time you get to 2035. What are we using for historical inflation rates? Um, off the top of my head, you... Are we talking like 2%? It's, it's, it's in line with, uh, with what he's told us about. I believe it's higher than 2%. I think it's more than 3, 3.5 or somewhere. But I can't quote you that number. Given up. all the quantitative easing that we've had mm -hmm. just in the past year and a half, and given that, given that it looks like there's going to be more with what's going on in Europe, I don't think your inflation rate is going to be 2%. I think we're probably looking at double-digit minimum. That's going to take these, these projections here, what is it, $100 billion to do all this stuff all the way out to 2035? Well, remember, one thing that this is a long-range plan, but it's also a short-range short plan. You heard me say, every four years, we redo this. So we're redoing the 2008 one. So a certain part of it, a big part of it, kind of stays the same. And then a certain percentage of it changes and gets updated. So whatever factors change, economic factors, inflation factors, demographic factors, uh, some of the CTCs decide they're not going to do a certain project, they change their mind, or they've introduced a new project that they're going to do. Whatever changes between 2012 in 2016, we make those changes and do all new projections, including new economic studies for the 2016 plan. So that will probably go out to 2040. So what's interesting about this plan is it's both a short-term plan that is able to stay current with changes. At the same time, it's a long-term plan that looks out a quarter of a century. It does both. If you're using 
if every four years you're making adjustments because and then let's say inflation starts going up after the first you know four years yeah. it's up to three percent by the time you get out to 12 years it's up to 10 percent we're no longer looking at a hundred million dollar project here we're talking about a project that's going to cost 150 billion I think by the time you get out to 2035 it could be 250 billion exactly. right now 40 percent of every dollar that this that the country that the federal budget, uh, or the, you know, that the Fed spend is, is being borrowed from China. That's going to be going up the way things are going. Where are we going to get all this money? Well, if those circumstances occur, I would suggest you're not going to get the money. You're going to start whacking projects. Yeah. Why, why would we start on a project when we're so unhealthy to begin with? Well, again, this is a long term. Planning is important, I agree. Yeah. This is a long-term planning document, and again, I'm going to say, then it goes to the individual CTCs, so when they're starting an individual project, and it doesn't matter what it is, it could be expanding 101, it could be doubling the gold line, it could be doing something else out in the England Empire. They're going to have 100% of their funding put together, they're going to be ready to break ground, it's going to be a one and a half to two year construction project, they're going to finish it, and they're going to move on to the other one. So this is a long-range plan. Therefore, it does have some level of uncertainty. But when you go to the next level of detail, which is VCTC or OCTA or LA Metro, you don't have that level of uncertainty. They're going to have everything totally locked in right before they're going to break ground. So this is at this level, and then what comes after it is at the ground level. Far more detail. Yes, I'd like to comment on what you Answer to this woman, you said that the money is already there that's being used to do these projects. I said in the first you, 10 years, most right. of that money's here or is guaranteed to be. Okay, but that's really not true because already they're complaining that there's no money, no tax revenue, no money coming in to fi fix the roads or anything else. So that's my first comment. Uh, second comment is I spoke about the elderly, but what I didn't bring up is we've got getting the kids to school, getting them to their sporting events, going to church. If, if you have to count on all this to get you places, it's not going to happen. For the kind of activities you just said, I would never use anything other than a car. It wouldn't okay. make any sense. Okay, but what you're wanting to do is tax these same people to use their own car and tax them to, the, to provide the rail system, the bus system, and everything else to get them to okay. where they are. And the, re the, and revenue, the revenue projections are revenues that already exist and projecting them out to 2035. Other than the exception, other than the exception, I've said the gas tax goes down, something would logically need to replace it. That would be the, the revenue is not there because they're using that as an excuse when things need to be repaired, whether it's county roads, the freeways, or whatever. You're, you're until just recently, man, you're you're totally correct that there is not not enough money to do proper repair on roads, which is one of the critical issues we've brought up in this document. But I don't disagree with you. There is repair going on. There's not enough repair going on. That's an absolute fact. You're right. And the other thing is, if people are counting on going on trains and buses, and if it comes to that point where people are made to do that, who's going to be there to take these people when the children or their elderly parents or their spouse has an emergency? How are they going to get back and forth? if this is going to be crammed down people's throats. I'm saying again, this is to allow anything that gets built, bus, train, freeway, nobody's required to use anything. It's an opportunity if people so wish. Okay. But in this the automobile is going to be here long after all of us aren't. I'm, okay. I'm positive. But in this area... It may not be run by gasoline, but it's going to be here. In this well, area, well, I can... Natural gas, you're right. I can tell you for a fact that people do not use the buses or the trains, have not since the 60s, still do not to this, to this day. If you see Amtrak go by, there might be one car that has maybe 10, 12 people, and there will be 10 cars that don't have but maybe one or two, if even that. And now my comment to the woman in the back that had to go to L.A. and you said it cost $20 a day for parking, I would gladly pay the $20 to have the freedom to park near where I'm going to be able to come and go when I want and not have to depend on a schedule. My understanding is that part of the SCAG um, process was is taking place because of a 
federal grant money that's come down to the states to the cities. Is that correct? No, I'm not sure. Is that something I said you thought? That well, all right. Somebody, whoever's working for state is getting paid, correct? Yes, I'm getting paid. Okay. So, where is the money for the planners and the presenters and the developers of this regional uh, plan coming from? Most of the funding, regardless of what we're working on, whether it's the RTP or anything else that SCAD works on, comes from the Federal Transportation Bill. It's annual funding from the federal government. A smaller percentage comes from the state of California. Okay. And a smaller percentage comes from dues from the 197 jurisdictions. Okay. So every time this plan is revisited, which according to your schedule is every four years, yes. um, it's an increasing, if nothing else, planning cost that involves a great many people. Is yes. that correct? Yes, a lot of people work on this. That's right. correct. So, I guess what I'm getting at is under the circumstances where we know our state is in debt mm -hmm. and we know that, you know, I'm not the mathematician that I've heard some of these other people say, but we know we don't have the money to do it. We know that we don't have the money for everybody to revisit it every four years. So why not try to develop, if you're going to do this, something realistic based on the economy that we currently have and the knowledge that it will take at least 10 years for our economy to have an upturn. So that there's an additional funds, taxpayer funds, spent for revisiting these plans. I don't think there's going to be additional taxpayer funds, but just to be clear, some of these projects, I mean, if you get into the RTP, if you look at it either on the table or on our website, you're going to see, as I mentioned, hundreds of projects. Some of those things are ready to break around tomorrow and are going to be. So we've slowed down. How are they going to be paid for? I'm going to say again, there is half-cent sales tax that is generated. The half-cent sales tax measure R in L.A. County is $40 billion of revenue over a 30 period of time. That is doubling the size of the LA County metro system. They are, as we speak, ready to break ground on the doubling of the gold line. I'm not joking, the money is in the bank, they're about to do that. There's freeway improvements and freeway expansions that go on throughout the region pretty much all the time. You can always find some construction going on. So while never disagreeing with what you're saying, which is obvious, which is that economically this country is in a lot of trouble, and it's going to take a long time to pull out of it. I mean, nobody's disagreeing with that. And the revenue projections we have in there reflect the slowness and that it's going to take a while to get back to any kind of semblance of normal. But I don't want to suggest that nothing is going on and there's no money right now, because that's not true. The, the, there's, there is money, there's just not as much as, you know, they thought there might be or they wanted to be. But there is money and there's construction projects, enormous construction projects going on right now and next month and six months and so on. And again, this plan is kind of the, the way that that is funneled back down local. Now, are those projects all green, all green projects under the codes, under the international codes? International codes? We are a subject to absolutely no international codes, oh, 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 ma'am. They're, they're the international building codes, the residential code, fire code, energy conservation codes. Those codes, codes are adopted by local city councils. Those are local codes, regardless of their name. Those are construction codes. Right. And everything that's built in the country is built to some kind of building code for safety. When, you know, trains or rails have their codes, and homes have a different code. So they're all built to whatever code has been adopted you for safety. Every city or every project? Every project? Sure, everything but, is But the codes built. of the cities now are green materials and Oh, well, you're mainly talking about the kind of housing and codes. Increasingly, increase, increasingly, they're doing that. You're right. right. You're right. I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with scale, but I happen to know you're right. But, oh, but well, the, what my my concern, my, my what I know is that the um, guidelines for all these projects come from ICLEI. All the guidelines you can look and you can find that you can see all the verbiage is all the same sustainable green 
stuff, and it all comes from that. And that I'm, that's a big concern, mm -hmm. you know. Of, and it's very expensive. Yeah, when it comes to like uh, normal building codes that you would see in your local jurisdiction, the state of California adopts minimum codes for homes or businesses to build, and cities can either well, I'm, I'm using they adopt a certain code is what I'm saying. They're not minimum. No, I, I I used the wrong term. They adopt a code which cities must use, or they can improve upon them or change them in some fashion that the local city council wants to do. And you are correct that as the years, I think the state re, redoes their codes about every four years themselves. Uh, it has nothing to do with SCAD whatsoever. But uh, as the codes have gone in, they have increased the uh, kind of uh, so-called green codes that they, compared to what these It does have something to do with SCAD because SCAD has speakers from Italy. They have, they have joint projects. I, can, I have newspaper articles back from 1998. I'm talking about the individual building codes. We don't deal with building codes. But I'm saying that SCAG is, is very involved in that. That's how you're set up. She's talking about general. I understand generally that the, the whole issue of sustainability and so on right. is, is something SCAG addresses. Yes, right. along with a lot of other things. It is. I have a, I have a question. Yes, um, regarding the whole plan, and I understand the light rail and the freeway and all of this stuff, but the way that the pictures are represented, all these things seems to indicate that there's going to be a, a complete change in terms of our our housing development, our commercial zone, you know, our commercial development. It's all kind of vertical, vertical, concentrated, dense, so you can walk out and get on a train and go, you know, wherever you're going to go. It seems like that has to go hand in hand with the, the you know, maintaining the roadways and whatever, you know, in terms of the metro and all those things that you want to, that you're planning on doing. Doesn't it depend on that? I mean, with this. You know what I'm saying? If yeah, we're working in a suburban outline area, like now, when I I know when I drive from San Diego to, to Los Angeles or out to here, it's like one constant, you know, there's city after city after city after city, and they're yeah. all spread out. Are you trying to get, go away from that? Are you trying to encourage people to concentrate into urban centers? Encourage. You heard me say we have absolutely no authority over local land use whatsoever, so I'll repeat that statement. But, but does that land use stuff have to be, will, will, will no. this... It does, okay, not, it does have, not have to be. It does not have to be implemented. But also, let me say, where did we even get projections that something like that may occur at all? We got them from the cities because over the past about 20 years, from early, oh, we only had a place to four. Oh, I didn't know it was four. Okay, um, we're going we're gonna to take two more questions, and we're going to have to close down today. Um, the cities over the past 20 years themselves. For their own economic reasons, their own downtown redevelopment reasons, whatever reason they may have had, growing cities, not the cities that are built out, growing cities have increasingly moved towards some of that kind of development while they were still doing single family homes in a very traditional sense as well. So we have looked at the trend line that cities themselves have demonstrated over the past 20 years. What are they responding to? They're responding to their private development communities. What are they Maybe responding to? What city? Maybe a city that we can look at that we're talking about. I think here, uh, I think uh, Thousand Oaks has development that, is much, that has certain areas in the town that is more dense than what would have been but built. What it would have been built maybe 30 years ago. I mean, I, you can go virtually, you know, yeah. Ontario, Irvine, okay. San Bernardino, Riverside. Quick, back quick back. question. Uh, but it does play less here in Ventura County than it would in some of the denser counties. That's a statement of fact. And a uh, comment that I just want you to be aware of. Uh, everybody, of course, in these plans is being pushed into bicycles. And uh, we all know that bike lanes in uh, the streets are very dangerous because many cars and trucks can't see the bikers and bikers don't follow the rules of the law of the road like cars do even though they're supposed to but somebody mentioned bike lanes and, and sidewalks and i want to tell you how dangerous that is uh, to pedestrians because i almost got killed in amsterdam because the car the bikes ride both directions on the sidewalks and uh, again, it comes to older people can't hear the bicycles and sometimes can't see them if they're coming from behind. So uh, please take that into consideration with bike lanes. One more comment, and then we're going to thank everybody, and apparently the one is constant. So we will... Yes, ma'am. We've all been kind of skirting around the issue, but I know we've all heard of um, Italy and Agenda 21. 
And right here is a book that says something about environmental justice. And if you go right to the Agenda 21 page, it has exact same wording that you have in your little book as it does in Agenda 21, which is an international agenda for development. We're not buying into it. And, and, you know, I mean, you guys are taking it straight, straight from the site. Absolutely, George. Right Soros. from the Agenda 21 books. And you're, and you're putting out the same developmental plans throughout the country. And that's not what this country was built on. And all of you that are doing this consciously know that you're eroding our freedoms and your own freedom. He may not know that. Though. And if you don't know it, then you need to go on the website. I've never read Agenda 21. Environmental justice. Can I tell you what environmental justice means? Can, can I tell you what environmental justice means in the real world? Real people? It means when you build a freeway, we have had a tendency to build them through low income areas rather than higher income areas. And we have a tendency to put those kinds of impacts on the same populations over and over again. Oh, so we're going to spend a million dollars an acre buying land to go through an expensive neighborhood rather than spending 10,000 an acre to buy land going through a I am saying that that term that we use, not, not in Agenda 21, has to do with when we build a, when, when somebody builds a new rail line, or somebody, because you're right, sir, they go to the cheapest land because that's the fastest way to get built. When, we, when that happens, the issue has been raised in the state of California that you need to pay attention to the rights of the people who live in those lower income areas. That's what it means. That's what it means. That's what it means. They have the right to move. All right. I, okay. Thank you. Folks, honestly, I thought you had huge, fantastic comments and questions. I appreciate all of you that came out in the old day. It took two hours of your time. Thank you very much.